Hi guys, welcome back to Petroleum Downstream Crash Course. And today I want to introduce to you the coil vis breaker. In our last video we already talked about what thermal cracking is about and what a vis breaker is. So let's go on to the actual machinery. So we have some short residue here, right? It goes into a heater. And it flows through some sort of a coil. And immediately when it comes out of the heater, I have a cooler or a quench. And why is it so? Well, after you so called cook your oils or this break or crack your oils, the oil still has some residual heat. And to stop the oil from over cracking or like overcooking you have to quench the oil you have to like immediately take it out of the heat source not just that cool it down fast and after that you send it to a fractionator send it a fractionator this is a mini atmospheric distillation tower Again, with the usual trays and stuff, side strippers, everything like that. And what you get, you'll draw off your gas. Here we'll have water. Here are some condensates, you reflux. So this is a cracked gas. Here you'll have some methanes, ethanes, and even ethylenes. Sometimes, yep. So you have your usual side streams. So here they call it crack naphtha to differentiate it from normal naphtha. And what's the difference? The chemical structure is different. So that the hydrogen to carbon ratio is different. As a rule of thumb, cracked, cracked, <coughs> cracked products usually have much lower hydrogen content and produce much smokier flames if you burn them as compared to what you get straight from the crude distillation unit or CDU. So here you have cracked gas oils and this broken residue. Now this will be about 80%. Now there are a few problems with this, right? You know this stuff is thick. Short residue is very thick. And we know and we know that it has a very good tendency to form coke. It's a high condensing carbon residue. Now if you pass it through that heater, some part of it is going to form coke while in the heater. It's going to foul up this coil. And what do you have to do? Periodically, you need to shut this thing down. You need to shut this thing down every like uh, 6 to 12 months, thereabouts, just to clean this up. To clean up the coils in the heater. So you can see, you can imagine lots of carbon deposits or coke deposits in the furnace coils and you need to clean this up every 6 to 12 months. So. <coughs> and as you know, this stuff is very thick, it can get, tend to get stuck here and the longer it stays in this coil, while it's being heated, the more it'll get cracked or cooked. So you don't want to have that. So what sometimes they do is besides cleaning it every 6 to 12 months or 6 to 18, it depends, uh, they inject steam in there. The steam there is to help the the steam there is to help the short residue flow better 
So you can imagine when I have steam, I I'm like diluting this stuff. I'm making it like a bubble flow. I'm I'm mixing it. I'm mixing steam in it. It's a very hot temperature. I'm helping it to flow along because part of it's going to be vapor. Part of it is going to be gas. Yeah, part of it's going to be liquid, which is the short residue. So this is going to help it to flow a bit better and you reduce the time it stays in the heater so the time it stays in the heater is known as residence time how long does it stay how long does it reside within the heater or the reactor such that the reaction can take place so if I inject more steam in there the steam will force will help to force all my residue through so you'll spend a lot less time so more steam It'll lower your residence time and you know, and thereby I can lower my cracking so to maximize yield one can control the heater temperature if you want to maximize how well you so-called crack your oil the cracking to max you Here you can control the heater temperature. And for this particular unit, you have about 450 to 490 Cs. Because cracking it starts to happen at 400 Cs, but you need to have enough of that cracking so that you can crack your vacuum residue or short residue enough. So they elevate the temperature just a little bit more. So if I increase the temperature to like 490, that upper limit, more cracking is going to occur. And again, I can adjust my steam input. The steam input rate to adjust my residence time. So that's how you maximize the yield from the vis breaker. So remember for a vis breaker, a coil vis breaker, the residue is the main product. Alright? Alright, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.